If you haven't heard of bump, you ought to because everybody's going to say to you, if you get a smartphone, have you bumped? Well, bump. Uh, people talk about exchanging business cards. It's such a nuisance. Take all the information from the business card and put it in the computer. Well, I've got a scanner that does that for me. And then people put their email in the back of the card, or you can't read it because it's pink letters on a red card. Well, with bump, you can take a device. You can see it's ready to bump. It's blinking up there. If I take this or my iPad and I tap it with your Android phone or your iPhone, I can put my contact information into yours and your contact information into mine. Very easy. Anybody wants to, while you're sitting here, download the Bump app and we'll do it before we get through here today. Um, not only that, but if I had an entry on my calendar and I wanted to send it to you after we had bumped once, I could put it on my calendar and just hit send and it would go through the Bump system to your calendar. I can send you photos, I can send you apps, I can send you music, and I do it all just by that Bump connection. So a lot of people are going to say to you about Bump, you know, do you have it? Again, a free app on Android and iPad. I'm going to go to one, another page of these and maybe try and leave a few minutes at the end. Everybody <laughs> wants to know about the weather, certainly. We've been watching that. This is my favorite weather app. It's called IntelliCast, and I have at least a dozen different ones that I've tried. But this one shows what's going on in my hometown of New Brighton. And of course, just like any of the others, you can shrink it down. But I like to switch over to the forecast. And now you have, it's going to be, uh, looks like the temperature is going to be nice in the 80s. Oh, and the 88 up there. Here's, this is the lows. And I can scroll across and check what precipitation, the UV index, the ever popular one. And uh, the wind speed, and down here at the bottom, I can scroll the hourly forecast, and I can pick any location in the country that I want to to use for that. Again, I have weather apps on here, and if I was traveling, I'd pull one of them up to check the weather. But if I was sitting around the house and somebody wanted to know about the weather, I'd pull out the iPad right away, and I wouldn't have to go to my computer. When was the last time anybody heard somebody say, um, "I need to make a call"? Do you know where there's a phone? <laughs> You had to go to a phone, right? You don't do that anymore. Well, that's what's changing here. You don't have to go to a computer to do computing. And that's the big difference. Uh, now, as far as business applications, I said this is a computer. It's not a toy, it's not a gadget, it's a computer. And it, oops, you'll notice. Um, as a computer, you can do almost everything you could do with a laptop. Almost everything. For example, with your laptop, if you have a corporation someplace that has a server someplace that you routinely access from out in the field, you could access that server. You notice in the upper right hand corner is the Citrix software, which is one of the biggest technologies for connecting remotely over the internet, widely used. There's dozens of different technologies available that are simple apps here and you put in your password, whatever the access is to your server or to your computer at home or to your other computers in the house or to your friends' computers if they want to, you want, want to help them with computer problems, you can access any computer in the world from here like you could with a laptop if you're given the permission to do it. Here's another one, the access, access here means the access database. So you can pull up records in an access database and there are just some samples and things here, but uh, all kinds of database applications that are tied into apps so that you can get data, again, just, just like a PC. Now, jumping back and forth, we had a friend in a track meet, and so when I would go there to timer, you hit the start button, Oops. and it times at the end of the first lap and the second lap and so forth. When you're done, it has it. <coughs> And you can also go back and see the history of all the races that she's run. They would all be listed here. And again, a free app that you download in two minutes and learn in 15 seconds. Here's a good one, calorie counter. Let's say you're going out to eat and you decide to check on the calories and something you're going to eat. So you go to restaurants and change. You decide you're going to go to Burger King. And when you do, you want, of course, a burger. And we will check on a bacon double cheeseburger. And lo and behold, it has 510 calories. 
And you notice that I said here, it's, it allows you to say that you had one for breakfast. Now, and it will record this in your dietary history. It will also record your exercise history, how many hours on the treadmill, how many on, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're eating bacon double cheeseburgers for breakfast, you probably don't use the, the exercise portion of this program <laughs> as much as others might. Um, let's see. I mentioned schools again. Here's one, interactive. Anybody ever dissect a frog? It is, okay, we got a fellow who's actually, yeah, several people. This one is more fun because you do it here. Dissect the frog first thing, and it gives you verbal instructions. If you could hear the sound, it would say, first thing you need to do is put the pins on, and you put them on, pin it down to the whatever. Go here. Then it would say, okay, pick up the scalpel, pick up the marker, make a mark where you're going to cut, and I didn't remember any of this, but make a mark where you're going to cut, and then cut it, and take the scalpel and peel apart the tissue. And at the end, you'll see all the organs in the body, and if you touch one, like the liver, up will pop pop a big picture with a discussion of it. When you've gone through the whole exercise and there is a quiz at the end, you can see how much you learn. Now, how does that differ from having a textbook to tell you about dissecting and a dead frog? Uh, totally different experience if it's really done well. This, a kid would find fun to use as opposed to trying to read a book about dissecting frogs. And when I categorize my programs with all these apps that I have, I sometimes <laughs> Um, put some in education, and then I got some games, which I don't care a whit about games, but I got a bunch of them that kids play with. A whole lot of times when I'm taking in one of these apps and trying to decide what bucket to put it into, I'm not sure, is it a game or is it education? Because you play it like a game, but you learn a ton going through it. There's a whole different discussion now going on about how education with computers is done compared to game developers. And I'm involved with an organization that's really serious about that whole subject. And if you look at how people learn and get experts at games and things, and then you see what computer training is like, it is just a world of art. And it's why kids get excited about games and people hate to sit down at the computer to try and learn something. A um, Couple more and then I will quit and take time for questions. If you are interested in foreign languages, and I'm sure some of you are, here's one called something like Jibiku. I've never heard it pronounced, so I don't even know how you pronounce it. This is one of the dozens of language translation programs that are available. And so if I pick, I want to translate. The only version I have is the Spanish language, and I'm not big on foreign language. But I'm going to load this language. What is your name? There. Now you can't hear it, but it pronounced it in Spanish. Now, if I was traveling, I would do the same thing on this. I would say, hi, I need a hotel room for the night. And then it would come out in whatever other language I had chosen. I could hit the button for that speaker to respond in the native language, and I would hear it back in English. There are a lot of those programs available. A lot of them are free. Just go look for tr language translation. Uh, the big thing, though, is that the majority of them, the translation's not done on this device. When you speak, the translation goes, uh, the verbiage goes in, is recorded, and sent off to a computer someplace. Maybe China. I don't know where it goes to. It goes to some other location, and instantly it comes back. Very, very quick operation. I can show that to you. The disadvantage of that, of course, is if I'm in some very remote location, I just don't happen to have internet access, those systems don't work. This Jabigo thing installs the whole language pair here, and that means I could use this any place in the world on top of Mount Everest if I wanted to, and it would translate for me because it does not require internet access. This is the same issue with mapping systems. There are many, many mapping systems available, and I've got one that I'm using to plan a trip we're going to be taking soon. And some of them require internet access. Some of them you can download the whole maps. And so you've got to be careful if you want to use it for travel to make sure you either have the downloaded maps or are going to have internet access. Uh, just real quickly across the bottom, and then I'll stop. You've noticed on the right side, lower right side, there's my calendar for the day calendar for the month. And we can see today up there in the middle, 
the first thing I have on my schedule is UCBC, and then I have to get my newsletter out. So if you sign up, my newsletter will be out today, and other things that are going on. Uh, contact management, if, I, if we bump with my, our phones, your contact information would go in here, then it would jump over to the iPad and it would be back on my computer in my office within a few minutes. Browsers, I've got a couple of different browsers. I've got uh, Safari, which is Apple's, and of course the email system, and here's my current email.